Hello, this is James Baer from the WebLogic team. I'd like to give you a quick demonstration of WebLogic Server Work Managers. We're going to cover today a, a demo application that has two simple JSPs, normal JSP, which is a very fast returning JSP, has no real logic in it, and a very slow JSP that has a 30 second sleep time that we'll use to indicate a very slow running process or perhaps a back end resource that is resource constrained. And what we're going to do is we're going to target a work manager specifically at the very slow JSP, and we're going to limit the number of threads using the max threads constraint for that JSP to five concurrent requests. And so that's called the max threads constraint. And then we'll also set a capacity constraint. What happens when you set a max threads constraint is any requests that come in that are over that max threads constraint go into a backlog queue, waiting to uh, receive a thread that becomes available. What the capacity constraint does is limit the number of threads that can go in that backlog queue, uh, or requests that can go in that backlog queue from uh, above and beyond the max capacity constraint. So in this case, seven minus five would allow only two threads in the backlog queue, and once we have two threads in that backlog queue, all the other ones will be rejected with a 503 response code. Five threads come in, um, it's all 10 are going to be issued at the same time, but only five are going to be able to get uh, allocated work immediately because of that max threads constraint. Two go in the backlog, and then three are going to get rejected. So that's what we're going to expect to see. And now I'll just go ahead and pull up the application so we can take a look at it real quickly. So this is Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse. Let's go look at the normal.jsp. It's a simple web module. It's a dynamic web project and I just have a simple log message here. It doesn't do anything other than log a message for normal JSP. If we go look at very slow JSP, I just have a thread.sleep for 30 seconds and I indicate when the um, very slow JSP is going to sleep and when it wakes up. But other than that, there's, there's no real logic there. Let's go take a look at how we configure the work manager. And in this case, I configured it directly in my weblogic.xml deployment descriptor. I can configure these in other deployment descriptors like weblogic-application.xml for your files or weblogic-ejb.xml for uh, EJB modules. In this case, it's an application scoped work manager. And here's my max threads constraint. I called it five max threads constraints. So it, it had, uh, and then I set the count to five. And then here's my capacity constraint that I set to seven. And we have a really nice GUI in here, so you can actually set all of this up um, with a nice uh, assisted XML editing. One thing I want to call your attention to is that you can limit the max threads to the size of a connection pool. And that's very handy because let's say you change your um, backend connection pool over time, then you don't want to have to maintain this number in multiple places. So by setting this uh, connection pool size here and then specifying the Gini name of the connection pool, I can automatically link my work manager to my data source uh, size, which is great because I don't want to have more threads waiting to hit the database, then I have database connections, right? You wanna limit those to be the same, that's the best practice. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the WebLogic Server console. Here you can see that my deployments section of the console that I have just this one single web application deployed and it's active. Before we do that, I also wanna show you a couple of things. If you go to each server, there is an overload tab in the configuration and this is where you can see that backlog request queue that we talked about that was the difference between the max threads constraint and the capacity constraint. So those requests that, that get spilled over into the backlog queue um, go into this um, area here and this will be the maximum number that can be in that queue. And so if you ever wanted to tune that you could do that, that here but uh, typically people just leave that alone. If you go to the deployments and click on the name of your application and look on the monitoring tab and the workload tab, we'll get a lot of it in information about the threads um, running in this application. So here you can see that we're using two different work managers, the default work manager, which everyone gets to use by default if they don't specify a specific work manager. And since our application, the normal JSP will actually use the default work manager. And then the very slow JSP is using this uh, custom work manager. And let me just show you quickly, I forgot to do that earlier. Um, 
in the WebXML, you can target this work managers at a servlet um, very fine-grained, right? You can just set an init parameter for the WL dispatch policy and then provide the name of your work manager. And so that's how I targeted it directly at the work manager. You also notice that I set a specific 503 error page called 503 error HTML. And the reason I wanted to do that was show you that you have control over the response that goes back to the user. So if you know that you might receive a 503 message because of a resource constraint like we have set up, then you might want to give them a nice message that explains, hey, it's not a big deal, but uh, we're a little overloaded, come back soon. So returning to the console, uh, we're ready to go ahead and look at things here. So um, this max threats constraint will show you um, current information. Now, right now the server's idle, so I see zero executing requests and deferred requests, but as soon as I go back to JMeter here and show you that I'm gonna have 10 threads, there's zero to 10, and I'm gonna send them instantly um, and concurrently at normal JSP and very slow JSP and see what happens. So let's go ahead and start the test. And yep, all the normal JSPs returned instantly. And if we go look at the very slow JSP, I see a couple of lingering ones. These were issued earlier, but I noticed I got three that were rejected. So if I go ahead and refresh this page, um, we can see right now that I have five requests executing. Um, th these are all in the thread.sleep state right now. And I have two that are deferred, so that means they're waiting in the backlog queue. And I've had three that were rejected. And the way that I can see that is obviously is um, in this uh, tab here. And so now they, um, I have five results returned, and if I go ahead and refresh this page, I'm going to see now that I have the two that were in the queue, now that is zero. They moved from the queue into the executing request side, and very shortly those will finish. If you were to go back, I have JRocket Mission Control set up in my uh, Oracle Enterprise Pack for Eclipse here as well. And if you were to actually go look at the at the threads, the, w the one nice thing by having them sit in that um, backlog queue is that they do not use a, a thread from WebLogic Server. They're just put into the queue. And by not shooting up those additional threads, we're really um, use, making much more efficient use of our resources. So let's go back and see if uh, Jamie are finished. Yes, it did. So here we go. Those the first couple of requests uh, were rejected immediately and didn't take any time to do that. Um, a couple of the requests, five of them, took 30 seconds, and the two that were in the queue I had to wait for 30 seconds before they got threads to access them, and then they got to execute, so they took 60 seconds. This is exa exactly what we expect. Um, these other two were from an earlier run. And the last thing I wanted to show you and let's to go ahead and start another test. We're starting another one right now. Is I wanted to show you that if I go back, um, here's the normal JSP. Notice that um, even though some of them are going into the backlog, that it returns instantly if I refresh a few times. But if I go to the very slow JSP and try and access it now while a test is running, I'm over capacity, right? So I get my nice uh, 503 HTML error. Um, that HTML page, this server for this request is likely beyond its capacity. Please try again later. And that's exactly the message that I had put in into my 503 error.html. So ho hopefully this gives you a pretty nice overview of the work manager capabilities in WebLogic Server. Um, you can target these very uh, nicely again, in a very um, coarse-grained way at, a, at the entire server by modifying the, the default work manager, or you can target them um, very specifically at JSPs in this case, or servlets, or EJBs, or MDBs. It's a very powerful capability. Thanks a lot.